Oh. Before, and by the way, colonizing one another is, is humanity's history. It just happened that maybe African, Africa has been one of the, the, the last, you know, um, colonized region in the world. So in our psyche, it, it is there and it acts like nothing happened before to others, but uh, flash news, it's the history of the world. We've been capturing each other back and forth, all of that. So anyway, but the truth is, um, Singapore, richer than Great Britain today. And then Hong Kong happened. And then because Hong Kong happened, China even today happened because China's like, wait a minute, what, what went on over there? And then China went on to do exact same thing with its SEZs, the special economic zones, some of the most free market zones in the world. And then look at it happen in communist China, who when it comes to economics decided that we're gonna do the free market, we're gonna be capitalist because that's the only way we tried everything else. We killed hundreds of millions of people and, and, we, have, and we have nothing to show for it. But now that we're tired of being disrespected members of society, because guess what, that's the other thing too. You wanna be respected in this world? You're gonna have to be among the, more, the prosperous ones for other reasons. Would it be nice, G, that we respect people just because? Absolutely. But that's really not the world we live in. So when China got tired of being disrespected, they're like, maybe we've got to build also some prosperity here because then they're going to hear us. And today, China. OK. Um, oh, my God. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Uh, I, I really need to try not to curse um, because, you know, they, 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 they could shut me off here. Um, you know, because YouTube Live has its policies. Um, but I mean, G Jesus, this is, I mean, th this is absolute fecal matter. What's coming out of her mouth? It, it's, it's crazy. This shit is wild. Um, uh, like, okay, I'm looking good. Sorry, I'm checking myself on my phone. But anyway, um, Wow, this lady's running her mouth. Okay, she said a lot of miscontextualized nonsense about China. Um, Jesus Christ! Uh, I mean, I mean, first of all, the idea that um, you know the change China has undergone um, is, you know, it, it, that it can be characterized as a categorical success. I mean, when when you I mean, I mean, China is still, China has improved from where it was decades ago, sure, but they still have a lot of significant problems, in large part as a result, or at least related to the economic and social models they adopted um, to, quote unquote, advance their societies, right? Um, I think namely, you know, if you if you just look at, you know, you can't divorce economics from all other parts of your society. Everything is intertwined. So if you're importing in someone else's economic system, right, there are um, cultural assumptions that come in with that. There's even a spirit that comes in with that and it produces certain things. So you know, when China kind of adopted some of the West's, you know, hyper-capitalist sentiment, um, they brought in a lot of the, the garbage that is in Western culture, and in some cases took it to even greater extremes. I think, um, you know, one example of this is the one-child policy, and I get there were a lot of things that went into that, but I don't doubt that them importing a Western economic system that is built on, um, you know, the idea that money is more important than life itself, right? That kind of influenced, um, you know, that policy and the culture that came along with it taking place um, or taking root there, right? China taking that up. And then in the end, right? They've caused a massive gender imbalance, and they've also they limited their own population growth, which ironically has made it harder for them to fully liberate themselves from the West. On top of that, a lot of this free market stuff they did was just them essentially 
allowing their people to be enslaved um, by the West, you know, making their crap in sweatshops and all that stuff um, for peanuts. And you can't think that wouldn't do damage to you. So to suggest that Africa just has to follow the Chinese model exactly, right? Um, without even getting to the fact that what's happening in China is not really this quote unquote free market ideal, right? Because the Chinese government, you know, put, keeps a pretty tight wrap on its companies. Um, and of course, Western governments do the same thing. They have a different way of doing it. But you know, all in all, just, you know, and then also to compare China and Africa. I mean, look, you know, I'm not minimizing what happened to the Chinese. Obviously, you know, they lost some wars in the West. They got oppressed significantly, um, even what they suffered at the hands of Japan. But to compare that to what was happening and what has happened and what is happening to black people with all due respect is absurd what's happening to black people well, obviously with any racism there's going to be similarities but the degree to which black people have been enslaved and murdered and just denigrated on a spiritual level is just on a different level so I mean, just uh, a crazy, just a crazy to make those kind of one-to-one -one comparisons and then say we should do what China did. I mean, oh my Lord. Being one of the, you know, being where it is at, even Hollywood, Hollywood, who tries to tell the world how to think, is being told by China what movies to make and how to tweak stories and history in order to be palatable for them. You see the power that comes with with being prosperous and and that that's false by the way like you know people think in such black and white terms well that's not it you know china has gained some um degree of power that it can use to leverage against the west however the west is still more powerful so just because china has used a little bit of power directly direct to be, you know, get Hollywood to reduce the amount of kissing in their films doesn't mean they run Hollywood. I mean, come on. Like, if you just look at the films with common sense, um, it's still white supremacist films. It's not pro-China. Like, uh, Jesus Christ. Like, it's intellectual. This, I mean, people, people with the brain the size of, like, a fucking worms. I mean, Jesus. The consumer price index has reached yet another 40-year high, and the latest GDP numbers confirm that the United States is in a recession. Now is not the time to have all your money in a stock market or tied to the U.S. dollar. Protect your savings from a highly turbulent economy by diversifying at least some of your investment portfolio into gold and silver from Birch Gold. Text Jordan to 989898, and Birch Gold will send you a free information kit on how to transition an IRA or eligible 401k into an IRA in precious metals. Birch Gold will even help you hold gold in a tax-sheltered account. For decades, investors have relied on gold and silver as a hedge against inflation. Now you can too. With an A-plus rating from the Better Business Bureau, countless five-star reviews, and thousands of satisfied customers, secure your future with gold from Birch Gold now. Text Jordan to 989898 and get real help from Birch Gold today. Again, text Jordan to 989898 to claim your free no-obligation information kit on how to protect your hard-earned savings with gold. What would you recommend concretely to countries like Senegal to get the hell out of the way, let's say, of the people who would, like you, would try to, would do everything they could to try to make it better? I mean, one of the things that happened with India is India established the Indian Institute of Technology, which is a deadly yeah. engineering school, and a huge number of its graduates went to Silicon Valley, as you well know. Yeah. And many of the successful Indian graduates of IIT started to dump money back into India and build a, a capitalist infrastructure there, or help. So a man who's capable of aggression, but has it under control, is a build a capitalist infrastructure. I, I just like to note that, you know,
the GDP per capita in India is still about $2,000, which is the same as the GDP per capita of Nigeria. Um, and, you know, obviously I'm Nigerian. I'm not dissing Nigeria. I'm just acknowledging that, you know, even though we are richer than most cap countries in Africa per capita, it's still a relatively poor country, right? I mean, pe people don't, can't easily access everything they need. So, you know, again, th this idea that we, we should just be copying exactly what India is doing and then everything's going to be fine. I mean, when their GDP per capita is about the same as Nigeria's, which are higher than the average African country, but not by a whole lot. I mean, I mean, this just crazy idea. It's nonsense. You're there. So this sort of thing can really take hold. If you were making recommendations to governments who wanted to get on board and stop being like Chad, Haiti, <laughs> Central African Republic, Congo, South Sudan, Libya, Yemen, and Venezuela, etc., what what concrete step steps should they take right. from the bottom up to get the hell out of the way? Exactly. So two things we've been doing uh, because I'm an I'm a practitioner as that's my entrepreneurial journey. I'm an entrepreneur, so I practice what I preach. Uh, but I also preach. I preach for free markets. And so when it comes to that, I'm I'm one of the hats that I wear is as the um, director for the African Center for Prosperity of the Atlas Network, the largest organization in the world of um, free market think tanks around the world. And so what we do there is we work on um, reforms around the world to take down barriers of entry for local entrepreneurs. So that's one thing. But as we mm -hmm. all know, that's a great initiative to take. And we've been making some really um, good advances in, uh, in, in uh, many countries, especially in Ghana. We've been making a lot of progress with our partners there, Imani. But, um, piecemeal, but that is piecemeal legislation. It takes forever. It is hard as heck. Every time it gets here, made 20 losses over there, and it's an continuous problem but until we get better we got to continue at it so that's one thing we've been doing and so that's uh, a hat i wear working with free market think tanks to try to make it easier for local entrepreneurs to to to, to join in the party uh additionally again no i'm not totally sure what the hell that word word salad she just spit out means um but what i can tell you is the fact that she was that vague um, means that she's not doing anything. Okay, you know, she's just a grifter, you know, probably working at some nonprofits, pretending she's working, collecting a check, and then the nonprofits, you know, are just raking in donations, um, you know, saying they're going to help local entrepreneurs get in the fight or get a piece of the pie. What, what the hell does that mean? Like, concretely, what are you doing? Like, Jesus Christ, man. Oh, these grifters, man. Hey, my sister, get your money. Get your money. But while you're doing it, please just shut the fuck up. <laughs> I don't need you spewing your nonsense into the air. I'm going bold. I'm going radical. For the past few years, uh, we've been advocating um, an idea for Africa that um, found some of its roots in um in latin america and again i'm related to the people who are involved in this my husband being one of the key figures in this movement a movement called the charter cities paul romer calls it like uh, of course this is a lover's affair hmm? of course of course is it nepotism if, if you if you grift with your wife no i think that's not the right word i think it's just a lover's grift I think that's what that is. Anyway. That he's a Nobel laureate in economics. Um, others calls it call it the free cities. I like to call it the startup cities. So the best way to think about it, Jordan, and it goes back to what you were talking about earlier when you said when you use the word operating software. Most of the developing, most of the back in the days, the way we used to call it is poor nations. Are they have regulations for poverty? They basically right, right, like. Oh my God, like, all right, first of all, I am a person who thinks that, you know, a lot of the like word substitution liberals do is uh, a little pointless. So, you know, I, I think it is kind of funny to say low income instead of poor, at, at, 
is it that makes something better? I mean, you're still saying the same thing. Um, and, you know, even if people don't get that at first, eventually they'll catch on, right? But with that being said, you know, j just the way she went out of her way to just call these countries poor. I mean, you know who she's feeding with that. I mean, like, uh, just really, she just went like, hey, just to emphasize, you know, these countries, they're poor. They're poor. They're poor. You know, and you, you can just see some white guy behind this screen just beating off right now. Um, you just love hearing that. Um, oh my God, these fucking grifters. Um, I really need to stop cursing. It's going to. Uh, oh, Lord have mercy. All right. Regulated for poverty, meaning the laws, the set of law, poverty. It only calls poverty. And so. What some of these fo folks have thought about, looking at the Dubai example, Dubai just recently entered the top 10 of the uh, international financial centers of the world. And what Dubai did at some point is think about it and be like, on this bear, you know. Dubai has oil. Dubai has oil. And they're not getting attacked as much as the African countries with oil. So, of course, Dubai is rich. Why are you comparing African countries to Dubai? Does it make sense? And even Dubai is an Arab country that still probably has some residual wealth from the roughly 1,000 years they were selling us as slaves. And on top of that, some residual wealth from the hundreds of years they spent wiping us out of North Africa and stealing our crap. So, and again, they have oil and they are not getting attacked nearly as much as any sub-Saharan African country with oil. So they're able to control, at least to a greater degree, their oil output. And the money they get from the oil so why on god's earth are you comparing sub-saharan african countries to dubai that's like comparing a rich man's son to a homeless man's son just because they both had a hot dog for lunch. It doesn't make any goddamn sense. Lord have mercy. Oh, sand, plot of sand that's technically worth nothing right now as is, this 110 acres of land, sand everywhere. They're like, well, maybe Sharia law is not the best for business. Um, we gotta think about better set of laws for business. We're talking about only about business, not family law, not anything else but business. And they decided there's got to be something better. And so they looked around and it's like, you might have seen videos like this before, but here's the big secret. Anyone can make one of these videos in a way. I'm not crazy, right? Hold up, hold up. I just need to make sure I'm not fucking crazy. Du Dubai has oil, don't they? Yeah, the UAE, um, where, where Dubai is in, forgive me, Dubai isn't a city, or I forget how the UAE is structured. Are, are there individual cities, technically countries? Um, Dubai is the most populated city in the United Arab Emirates and the capital of the Emirate of the Dubai. The most populated of the seven monarchies which together form the United Arab Emirates. So, okay, it looks like they they have, um, okay, so Dubai itself is not a country. It's just the cap, well, um, I guess it is, right? Because the Emirate of Dubai, I guess you could also call that one Dubai. Um, and it's just their capital has the same name. Okay. Um, uh, 
United Arab Emirates consists of seven emirates, which were historically known as the Trucial States. There are no internal barriers hindering movement between the emirates. So, okay, it's some sort of confederation-like system. But anyway, Dubai. How did Dubai become so rich? The UAE is the third richest country in the world, below Luxembourg at number two and Qatar at number one. And they're talking GDP per capita, right? Um, with a GDP per capita of $57,744. The bulk of its money comes from the production of goods and provision of services related to petroleum, otherwise known as oil, petrochemicals, which come from oil, aluminum, and cement. So, like, what? Most African countries don't even have crazy oil. But then the ones that do are getting attacked like crazy. I mean, so why would you compare all of Sub-Saharan Africa to Dubai and say, just do what Dubai did? When these fools have oil that most African countries don't have, and they have a degree of freedom that most African countries don't have. Yeah, the, the pale people colonized them too and, you know, still to some degree control what they do to a large degree, but not to nearly the same degree as us. Because at the end of the day, them and the pale boys are our cousins. They're much more closely related to each other than they are to us. And because the pale boys mode of operation, just like the whole Euro Eurasian family is the further away from me, the worse I, the further away from me you are rather, the worse I treat you, they treat the Africans worse. So they just done a whole lot worse crap to us, right? And coupled with the fact that, you know, the sand, um, you know, the, the, the people who come from sand, um, you know, basically did the same thing as the Pale Boys and got some benefit from that. You know, they, they're just kind of less successful, but still pretty successful at that. You know, you just can't make these kind of one-to-one -one comparisons and say, do this and you'll be successful. I mean, e e let, me, let me just finish up the video before I I just say everything. But like, Lord have mercy, this is... Oh my God, Lord have mercy. This lady's talking nonsense. To take one of the terms you used earlier, they're starting to realize, hmm, common yeah, law is actually a pot of sand that's technically worth nothing right now as is. This 110 acres of land, sand everywhere. They're like, well, maybe Sharia law is not the best for business. Um, we got to think about better set of laws for business. We're talking about only about business, not family law, not anything else but business. And they decided there's got to be something better. And so they looked around and that's actually when, to take one of the terms you used earlier, they're starting to realize, hmm, common law is actually a better way for business, specifically British common law. So at that point, and I'm oversimplifying here because otherwise we can totally geek out on it. Remember, this is like one of my latest things that I've been involved in, um, but latest it has been the past 10 years and I'm gonna share with you a win. Um, so Dubai is like, we have to adopt British, um, you know, common law, primarily British common law. We're gonna hire retired mm -hmm. British common law judges to come and educate the law here, train our own people. And that along with many other reforms to also become a top center uh, when it comes to the, um, and in the free market when it comes to the finances. Dubai- yeah, well, That British common law, that British common law system. So okay, it's- Okay, first of all, again, you know, I'm not pro Sharia law here, um, like to the extent that I understand it. I'll add in that caveat just because, you know, I'm no expert in Sharia law. Um, you know, um, so I, I guess what I really should say is that, um, you know, I, I'm not a guy who 
is going to say Sharia law is above critique. I think that's a more accurate statement of, of my opinion on that. Um, you know, just just because my knowledge is limited. However, I, I don't think these people know what the hell Sharia law is, and I don't think they know what they're talking about. Because you know, I I don't know how that impacts business, and you know, I, again, because conservatives tend to misuse the term Sharia law a lot. I know that much. So I don't even know to what extent it was even in place in Dubai. But if it was, I can't really, I have a hard time believing that specifically was an impediment to them making money. Because again, you know, Arabs um, at various parts of history have been very rich. Um, you know, before the era of um, white supremacy, right before that, about a few hundred years ago, Arabs were one of the richest, if not the richest um, group of people in the world. The Chinese might have been richer. Um, and uh, um, of course, um, uh, well, okay, one of the richest people in the world in the uh, Western Hemisphere, Eastern Hemisphere, I should say, because um, I think that the, um, you know, like people in the Americas uh, also had a lot of money. Um, but point is, historically, um, I, I don't know if you could be accurate to say that's an impediment to them making money. Um, and, you know, by the same token, English common law, to the degree it is relevant to business, I don't know, you could say it guarantees wealth. I mean, the British have gone broke plenty of times. I, I just think it's a ridiculous argument. This is like, you know, a Fox News host at the bar at 2 a.m. in the morning spouting nonsense. Like, Lord have mercy. It's very, very interesting theologically and metaphysically. So it's predicated on the idea that people have, every individual has all the rights that there are except for those that are specifically regulated and limited by legal necessity. And then generally that, that realm of necessity has emerged only as a consequence of disputes between people. So you're free to do whatever you want unless you have a dispute with someone else. Then the dispute is adjudicated according essentially to constitutional and theological principles, and then a precedent is established then the whole body of law built up that body of precedence. Yes. Yeah, and it's bottom up, not it's, top down. It's eh? totally and English common law is a gift from God, yeah. man. No, it's something else. Absolutely. And that's the key word there when you said bottom up. So common law is so much better for bottom up approaches. And we all know that markets work better in a bottom up approach. And also when they have to educate the law and um, resolve a dispute, they're going to be much more respectful to the contract that was passed between the two parties than say civil law would be. Right. Mm -hmm. And so anyway, so from this standpoint here, you have Dubai who is now trying to put all of this together. And eventually they put a set of laws together that would now be conducive to being a top international financial center in the world. And voila, in less than a generation, in less than 25 years, Dubai completely unrecognizable. Okay. Um... My IQ might have just gone down, so forgive me if I, I sound a little stupid when I come back to you guys. Um, Lord have mercy. Um, stop sharing my screen. But, um, yeah, that was nonsense. So, long story short, to sum up my thoughts on that video, obviously I gave you a lot of thoughts uh, while well, that, 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 you know, that, that cat feces was rolling. Um, um, the idea that the problems Africa has today were not caused by attacks from outsiders is patently absurd. That's what they're the overall gist of what um, they're trying. They're implying. They're outright saying. Um, 
And, you know, sure, um, there's a nuanced conversation to be had, be had about, um, you know, not over-focusing on colonialism specifically um, as like the one time that outsiders really attacked Africa, right? And acknowledging that this is a tens of thousands of year old process of which colonialism was just one um, segment, if you will. Um, but regardless, right, to say that it's not the one of the causes um, of the problems that Africa has today doesn't make sense. To say that um, the larger process it's a part of is not the cause doesn't make sense. And then crucially, right, these people talked about how it's not the cause of why Africa is poor, but they never really said why it is poor. Now, I think they want you to infer this because Africans are stupid, um, you know, or just hurt themselves, whatever. Um, and, you know, that's not it. Um, like, obviously, you know, um, th there are obviously times when Africans do hurt each other, you know, wars. Um, you, you can look at um, some sellout behavior that occurred during the so-called slave trade and obviously it's there's a lot of myths and nonsense um, that is commonly accepted about what has happened is continuing to happen to African people um you know and certain things like the so-called slave trade right I know a lot of you be confused as to why I'm calling it the so-called slave trade and that's a lot to get into I don't want to get into all that all I will just say 